Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. It is a couple days before New Year's of 2023. Um, just want to give you a video from an SEO guy. It's about EV electrical vehicle charging for residential. Uh, basically, <clears throat> a lot of people call me and they say they need 240 volt install um, or dryer outlet. Typical wire size, that's not. Um, if you're gonna do an electrical vehicle, they're typically gonna be a copper wire you have to use, unless you're gonna go aluminum to a disconnect and a disconnect to the box at copper. Sometimes people do that because it's a little cheaper if you're going a far distance. Um, but in general, it's gonna be a 50 amp service, 240 volt. Uh, I would typically pull three wire because it's a more common conductor than we use with ground. I wouldn't do a two wire with ground. Even though Tesla has gone to just a three wire connection, I don't think that that's wise because other electric cars are four wire because it's with that ground. Um, you also have to keep in mind if your house style is a ranch, uh, sometimes it's easier to go up the wall with a piece of flex across the attic and back down. But if it's gonna be a <coughs> two story, then you have to put flex on the drywall or conduit. Um, the other thing you gotta keep in mind, closer to the panel, always cheaper. Uh, Tesla has a, a pack that you charge, it's hardwired. Uh, their plug-in and hardwire uh, both come with GFI protection, which Article 625 talks about that. If it's a typical 210.8, GFI protection outside and it's not a plug-in and it's hardwired, you don't have to GFI, but with cars you do. So, but I know that I've done so many Teslas in the last 18 years that they have GFI protected, which is a CTU current transformer on the neutral or the hots to protect the fact that it'll shut down. Usually that's done inside of the dash of the car uh, or sometimes they're adapting capsule, which is uh, it twist locks for different various connections for different amperage. Usually the plug-in one is closer to 32 to 40 amps, and the ones that you connect are 48 amps. Other videos I did five, six, seven years ago had the little dial that you twist to adjust the current. They have gone away from that that I've seen. Uh, Lightning trucks still do that, but your typical Mustang or Volkswagen, um, your most of your electric cars don't do that anymore because they don't want you changing that current that could cause a fire. Now, you also need to know what size your service is. These guys right here, um, they have a disconnect on the side of the house, which this one is right through this wall. That's 125 amp. So to me, that's plenty of power to run your one electric car. You should always charge at night, not during the day, unless you're not cooking and doing laundry. If you have a 200 amp home, you might be fine with two cars, but that depends on how many mini splits, air conditioning units, electrical heat, how many ranges, gas or electric or hybrid of them. So there's a lot of various things there. Some panels like this panel is rated at 125 amp, fed with a uh, 125 amp wire, but the rating on this uh, panel is okay, but it has not enough room in the bus bar. Some bus bars have extra, I call them like the molar teeth. They have divots in them, so you can adapt a quad twin or piggyback breaker. A lot of them do not, but depends on the age. If your home is gonna be older than 1990, you might wanna be careful to make sure you check out your electrical before you buy your car. But we can't always drive around to every estimate, look in your panel, uh, because you might get something. You might buy a hot tub, you might buy a car. Uh, sometimes that's a little tricky for a free estimate. Uh, if you want to pay us for that service, that, that works out too, because it, it helps our time in case you can't do it. But on this scenario, we had to set a sub panel. So this was not here as of four hours ago. On the other side of this wall is a laundry room, and they have a full 30 circuits panel, and they just did their basement. So they asked me, could I come off the basement? Well, it doesn't make sense to go back down and come back up with that basement panel, right? But beyond that, if you have a basement panel, you need to label it. This was not labeled. She simply turned off the breaker, said the lights were out. We came back up when I did the bid, 
She knew her car was coming the next day, which she got yesterday. This right here is a six gauge copper, only good for 50 amp. You cannot charge a car off of a basement with that size. When I do my basements with people, I make sure to tell them we could go up to 100 amp service. If the fact that the garage is here, the basement's there, and the car's gonna be on the other side of the house or a hot tub disconnect. If you're gonna do a hot tub and a car and a basement, you might wanna consider a 125 amp main breaker. Or not main breaker, but a stab breaker. But you, they do not make 150 amp stab breakers, even if you have a 200 amp service, okay? So for this service, because that was a 125 out there, but a 100 amp wire breaker feeding here, we stepped it down to a 90 amp, but yet an SER number two, bringing it into here. So this panel is rated at 100 amp, and the wire is 100 amp, but the breaker sizes it to 90, and I have my 50 amp EV charger. Although I did have to move a couple circuits over there to get to here, and you need to put in a surge protector. I know it's only code if you change your service or you have a new home from 2020 and on, but we still think I push definitely strong saying you need a surge protector, whether at the main breaker or in a panel somewhere, okay? Because you're charging your car here. Other than that, yeah, we had to drill through all of this wood. And then once we did, we had a six gauge wire up, a yellow 12 fourth wire here, and then the SER through and had to have a large enough hole to get through. This is not a two by six wall, it's a two by four wall, I was very surprised. Uh, but this house is 20 years old. They have gone more to two by six walls on garage uh, firewalls and exterior. So anyways, this we, we mudded it all and got it put back together and tested it so it's working great. Now she still has space. There is, so this is a typical breaker panel that has the teeth that you can quad up this panel. You cannot quad up a surge protector, but I could take this out and put one on the main disconnect out there if I wanted to, to have more space. But this panel is a 1224. Now full breaker arc faults. Yeah, this house was definitely wired in 2005. That's when these old school Siemens teal arc faults came out for just the bedroom. So maybe even 2003. But yeah, we're not gonna arc fault that today because of the fact we moved the wire about three foot. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. I Hopefully that'll help you out to understand. I did have somebody just last, uh, last fall call me up and bought a car, assuming they could plug it into their home by putting an outlet. That did not work on that house for 1950. Uh, the panel was in the pantry closet of the kitchen. Shelves were all around it. It was this small and you couldn't add a breaker. They needed to do a service upgrade. It was too small with the mini splits and the AC they had. Keep in mind that when you're charging in the summer, your air conditioning is competing with the amount of current there. If you have $100 in your pocket and you take out $48, how much do you have left? $52 or 52 amps. But mind this, you need to be about 85% max to 80% of that breaker on the main breaker to protect yourself. Because of the inrush current on an air conditioning unit as it ages, you might want to think about a new start run capacitor or if your motor's going to lock rotors if your ac is older than 15 years you better pay attention because if you start hitting it on and you turn all the lights on in your home and boom, they start to all flicker you have an issue going on that's not safe again don't trust google google likes to say lights flickering is a dimmer or a light bulb yes it can be but it can be way the hell more than that we had someone have a range go out uh, a month ago and their range blew out because the variation on the voltage, the appliance guy actually caught it. But we found it at 14%. And then the, and then the meter company came out and called us when the next day and said, yeah, they, how do we get to manipulate that same thing? The homeowner had to stay home. He showed them what he had to do. And he said, yeah, we got a nick line underground. So luckily, utilities took care of that for him. But he still had to pay a service call. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully you guys have a good new year. We'll see you in 2024.